Hi, if you are making short form content for TikTok or YouTube shorts or the other ones, I wanna help. And I've been trying to help for a little while. The most popular video on this channel is how to edit TikToks in the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. And I've also come out with free presets to help people edit uh, specifically gaming content. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I am going to uh, circle back to that free preset and show you a super easy way to save any changes you've made there. I know lots of people have used that preset, uh, but they're tinkering with it every time they wanna use it. Um, and there are some things that can make your life a lot easier if you are using that preset. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your own preset. You can customize it as much as you want. I'm gonna show you how to bundle that up and have that available to drag and drop on the edit page. So all you have to do is drag in that clip you want to be made into a TikTok or YouTube short, apply the effect and your editing will be done. Outside of any individual editing you wanna do uh, like text or specific effects just for that video. Now this video will specifically target like gaming highlight, gaming clips, but the principles here absolutely apply to a lot of different things. Things. And if you find yourself um, doing any repetitive task when you're editing uh, all these TikToks or YouTube shorts, uh, this can help you. Let's get started. All right, we're here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page and in my media pool here, I have this little clip that I have just comped together. This is not me, this is a stock footage clip and then a Halo clip I grabbed just to mock up this sort of like live stream Twitch clip situation. I also have a timeline open here, but this will not work for us. We want this final video uh, to be in a vertical format, nine by 16. And you can either create a new timeline from scratch or if you have an existing timeline, you can right click on that, go to timeline, timeline settings and just change up the two numbers on this resolution, uh, whether you want this like full HD or 720 or anything. So 1080 by 1920. And then from here, I'm just gonna drag this clip right onto my timeline. Now this is a bit of extended clip, so I'm just gonna trim this a little bit just so it's a little bit shorter. Bring that to the beginning of my timeline, and then we can get to work. Now things get interesting quick in DaVinci Resolve, specifically when you want to use Fusion uh, when it comes to aspect ratio. You'll see right here, I have a vertical timeline, and I have a source clip here, which was originally horizontal. If I just open the Fusion page now, it will load that source clip into Fusion, and that will be in its original aspect ratio. But if I go back, right click, make that a compound clip, select Create, and I open the Fusion page now, then we'll bring that compound clip in with just a media in instead of that source clip, and we will start with that vertical aspect ratio with our clip shrunk down here. This will be the foundation of where we will start to build our effect because when you package up uh, your final effect as a preset, any drag and drop presets applied to a clip on the edit page do not get applied to the source clip directly. They take the aspect ratio of your frame into account and then apply a sort of instanced effect over that. And part of this is why it is uh, essential that you start in the right aspect ratio. I've had some people use my former presets and if they don't change that aspect ratio to that vertical, then they are applying a preset that will shrink it down in the sort of full frame. It doesn't work. This is where we are going to start building our effect and you need to apply it to a clip that is in a uh, vertical aspect ratio timeline. But now that we're here, we can start building. And right off the bat, one thing we're going to do is we are going to leverage the power of nodes. Fusion is a node-based system. In my tutorial for completely editing on the edit page, we started by uh, duplicating our source clip three times, and then we cut those up to use them as uh, different assets in the scene. We don't need uh, three source clips in the Fusion page because we can use the output of this one source clip multiple times. Uh, for instance, I'm going to pull up the search bar by pressing shift space. Uh, this shows us all the tools you have available in Fusion. I'm gonna create a transform node, which I already had selected here. And then I'm gonna select that and copy paste that again. I'll clear out this little connection here we have going to the media out. Again, anything you do in the Fusion page, you have to plug back into that media out to get it back on the edit page. And I'm gonna connect this media in. Uh, again, you can preview any node just by clicking uh, one or two on the keyboard. And if you have uh, one or two viewers up here, that will show you there. And I'm gonna take the gray square output of this and plug this into both of these transforms. Now currently, because these are separate, you can only preview one of them at a time. If you preview, uh, nothing will change because we haven't changed anything yet. But I'm gonna take this bottom transform, make sure I'm previewing that, and just scale this all the way up until that fills the screen. Then with that node selected, I'll pull up the search bar again. And I'll search for something like uh, blur, that'll be fine. I'll pull up the blur. Again, making sure that is previewed. Pull in a color corrector node, preview, pull down the gain just a little bit. And now we can see what we've done. We started with this media in, we scaled it up, we blurred it, we made it a little darker. Now, if I pull in this second transform, 
uh, connect this gray output to the gray output of this color corrector, that will create a merge. On the merge, you have the yellow input, which is the background, the green input, which is the foreground. So if we preview that, now we have that second fresh clip over this scaled, blurred, darkened clip. If you mess up these inputs for whatever reason, you can always click Control T, which will swap those around. In this case, it puts the version we want on bottom on top, so you can't see it. We want that, that the other way around. And then on that transform, I'm gonna zoom this in just enough so that our camera is about at the edge, so it's really focusing on that action. That's all right, but we want to keep our camera in frame. So we are going to go back to this media in. There are a few different ways to do this. Again, you could always just straight copy this media in, but I'm going to create a brightness and contrast node. Pull this media in into that. I will make sure that is previewed. I'm going to toggle on the alpha and bring that all the way down. And oh no, our image disappeared, but I'm going to go to that brightness and contrast, uh, click this rectangle to add a mask to that. And now you'll see it is only cutting away what is inside that mask, but we can go to that mask, invert it. And now whatever is inside this mask is staying and everything else is getting cut away, which is what we want for our camera. I'm going to move this box down to that camera, pull in these cropping controls so that we just have a selection that is entirely our camera. I'm gonna create a transform node coming out of that and pipe that into our merge as well. So now we have the background blurred scene, we have our gameplay, and then we have uh, this little version of our camera down here. But in this transform node, we can change that. The first thing I'm gonna do is uh, change this pivot. You'll see a little X there. I'm gonna change this pivot so it's directly over this camera. So things like a scale and rotation, those make sense. So I can drag that pivot. Now, if I drag the center, it'll only be around there. I can drag that up to the top and then scale this back up. And there we have our basic layout. You could fine tune a lot of things. Um, you can go back to something like this rectangle mask, pull up this corner radius. So now you got those rounded edges. You could pull in this width so it's like a circle, something cool like that. And if we connect this final merge to our media out, if we go back to the edit page, you'll see that all those changes are reflected here as well. That's super cool. And all things considered pretty quick. You could add uh, text or further effects. You could animate any of these parameters so your camera increased or decreased. Lots of cool things. And even though this was pretty quick, Let's make it even quicker. We are going to make this a preset using the macro system in Fusion. It's crazy powerful. I've made several videos going into depth into the macro system and how powerful it is. And on my existing TikTok preset, I have a host of options that you can control right on the edit page. In this video, I'm gonna keep this very bare bones with the assumption that you can sort of dial in the exact look you want once, and then all you have to do is drag and drop the effect and you don't have to do anything else. If you want more flexibility, you will be adding controls in the macro system. I might mention that when I get to a later point, but that's not something that this video uh, will include. We're focusing on getting you a custom effect that works for you instantly. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna select these nodes. I'm not gonna bring in the final media out. I'm gonna do right click and I'm gonna to go to macro create macro. I'll name this something like fast TikTok. And you'll see in this window, we have every tool that we have created here with every option of all their parameters here as well. I said, I'm not going to do it here, but say if I was to go back to uh, rectangle one, which was the mask on this shape, I might do it just to demonstrate. You can scroll down and I am just going to check corner radius. And you'll see what this does in a second, but this will give us uh, control over this parameter on the edit page. And I'm going to go to file, save as group. You can save this anywhere. You just want to be able to access this again very quick later. I have a folder for lots of my presets things. So fast TikTok is getting saved in there. I will close out. Then I'm going to open my effects window here, come down to templates, edit, uh, effects. And I'm going to come over to these three dots here, click show folder and that should open up this effects folder inside edit here. A few things have changed with this over some recent updates. This should work. If this doesn't give you this effects folder, it might take you to the edit or templates folder. You should be able to always manually create this folder or for some users, I think only Windows, um, the thing we're going to do soon, we're gonna drag that fast TikTok setting file into this folder. I believe you should also be able to drag that right into this page inside Fusion. Uh, and either of those might require a restart. It's gone back and forth a little bit as we've gotten some of these really cool upgrades. But what we are going to do, I've got that presets test folder and this fast TikTok setting. I'm gonna drag that right into the effects under edit here. 
that'll pop in here. And if I search for fast, we have fast ticked up here. Let's hop back to the edit page. And what I'm gonna do is drag in a uh, fresh version of this halo clip here. We see it is back to that original, like you just dropped it in yourself. We have this entire clip. Again, I will trim this just a hair. And then I'm gonna make sure my effects library is open here. Come down to effects. Select that, come down to Fusion Effects, scroll down, and it does look like this requires a restart for me this time. So I'm gonna restart Resolve. And I did that. We have our fresh clip in effects. We have fast TikTok. And if I just drag this effect right onto that clip, boom, our TikTok is edited. And that one control we checked. If I select that, open the inspector, come over to effects, we have that one quarter radius slider. Hey, you want it to be square, you want it to be circle, you're good to go. You could check as many options here if you want some variation on the edit page. Or again, you could spend as much time as you wanted in that initial time in Fusion, customizing and tweaking. So all you have to do is drag one effect onto your clip and your editing is done. Again, you could include anything you want here. You could bring in entire other elements like uh, pop-up call to actions and it would all just work. I know this could help out a ton of people, so I'm excited to finally make this video. I do think this is a pretty massive benefit to working in DaVinci Resolve. In the free version of DaVinci Resolve, you can create something like this that can save you hours of time editing. But if you don't even want to do this much work, you do have my free preset. It's pretty much this exact same thing. Let me show you. I have this Halo clip again. Boom, boom. And I can scroll down to my uh, Sterling Supply Company TikTok, drag that on. And this is how it treats this clip. Because this is meant to work with uh, any simple gameplay clip, it does have to be tweaked a little bit for this specific clip. But in the inspector in effects, you just slide this over to the camera, pull down the height again, camera size back up even round that out, but each size for the position, boom, you're done. This is faster. But like I said at the beginning, let me show you how to save these changes we made. Like I did say, any effect you drag and drop is, sort of, is a sort of instanced effect. If I brought in another fresh version of this clip and dragged that effect onto it, it would be a back to normal. But watch this. I'm hoping they bring this functionality to the edit page soon, but right now we have this clip I dropped my TikTok preset on, and in the inspector, uh, under the effects controls, we have this little button to load it up in the Fusion page. I'll do that and you'll see that this entire effect is represented by this stack of notes here. You can double click and see what I did here. Pretty much the thing I did earlier in this video, but I'll shrink that back down. And we have those same controls here, but this time you can right click on the name and you have these options, including the settings option down here. I'm gonna go to settings, save as, and I will just name this like Halo, save. Now, watch this. It saved all those settings changes. So if I go back to the edit page and I have this clip that has a clean version of that effect, the clean version will not change, but if I just hop real quick into the Fusion page, go to those controls, right click, settings, load, uh, it'll bring you to this custom location. I can click Halo, open, and boom, those settings are changed. If you need something quick, this is something quick. If you need something uh, powerful and flexible and custom to you, why not dive into the Fusion Mage and build something yourself? And like I showed real quick, you can check uh, all of the controls you want available in the edit page and use this system for uh, saving variations of those for maybe different games or whenever you change up your OBS layout. It's super flexible. I really hope this video is valuable to you. Again, this is something I've talked about a lot on the channel, uh, macros and presets. I have given away a lot of free presets. I like this stuff a lot. So if it interests you, click around the channel, you might find something else you like. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.